Hello guys and gals and welcome to another episode of Unique Items. There are a lot of bows in the game and this one in particular is certainly an oddity um, because it is actually pretty good when upgraded uh, but you will rarely ever find it in its best condition. Um, as we go over this bow together you will understand. Um, it is the Gold Strike Arch Gothic Bow. Now the Gold Strike Arch Gothic Bow is an uh, exceptional bow and it can be upgraded um, I believe at least one time uh, let me double check that just to be sure and it will upgrade into uh, its maximum version which is the Hydra bow um, to upgrade this bow you are going to need um, a, a, a pull rune a, a lum rune and you're going to need a perfect emerald um, so do keep that in mind and we're going to put those into this cube in advance because we will be upgrading this so let's go over the item together and let's talk about it. So we have a damage of 35 to 175 damage, which is um, not exactly the highest in the world, but if we, when we upgrade it, it will go up higher. Uh, we have a dexterity requirement of 118, a strength requirement of 95, and a level requirement of 46. Um, it is a relatively slow weapon because it is a gothic bow, uh, but it does have a huge amount of increased attack speed of 50%, which is freaking awesome. Uh, we have a 5% chance to cast level 7, Fist of the Heavens, on striking. And Fist of the Heavens is an ability that comes down and uh, deals lightning damage to a target. Um, and it also dishes out Holy Bolts, um, depending on how many undead monsters are nearby. Um, so, for instance, at level 7, which is the level on this bow, uh, we will get a magic damage, or sorry, a, <laughs> sorry, a Holy uh, Bolt damage of uh, 76 to 86 to all nearby undead monsters. It will shoot out one bolt per monster. And a 2.4 they have announced that the Holy Bolts will pierce, uh, which means that this will do more damage in the future than it does now, uh, which basically means, like, say you were in the middle of um, Talrosh's tomb, and there was, like, hundreds of skeletons, and one of these Holy Bolts uh, comes out. It's going to pierce through every single skeleton in that line, and it's going to deal a lot more damage uh, in the future than it does now. Uh, we also get a single target lightning damage hit on the monster that it procs on of 240 to 290 damage. So a decent, a little bonus damage that is on a 5% proc chance. We also have a 250% enhanced damage, uh, which does vary, unfortunately, by 50%. So 200 to 250%. Um, that is going to be the real meat and potatoes of this, but we also have some other nice effects on this as well. So we also have a 150% bonus to attack rating, which does vary by 50%. Uh, we have a um, 200% percent damage bonus to demons and a 200 percent damage bonus to undead um, both of which will act as off weapon ed and since it is giving you both um, it is functioning very similarly to a might aura so if you were to have a might aura on your character um, you could go to um, you know act two in nightmare difficulty and hire a might merc and you can see exactly how much might would give you um, this particular um, ability though is a variable so the 200 percent damage to demons and the 200 percent damage to undead is a variable of 100 to 150 percent Sorry, 100 to 200 percent so it's really kind of sad uh, because we've got a 50 percent variable on the ed we've got a 100 percent variable on the damage to demons we've got a 100 percent variable on the damage to undead we've got a 50 percent variable on the bonus to attack rating uh, they really didn't want you to find a perfect version of this bow um, but this particular version that you're looking at right now is perfect and that's because i cheated it in um, it's uh, it's cheated in with Hero Editor. So um, if we take this bow and we upgrade this, we will get a fairly nice bow. So we're going to do that real quick. So we've got 35 to 175, 118 dex, 95 strength, level 46, to 35 to 238, uh, 167, 134, and uh, level 70 requirement. Now, the bow that we're going to be comparing this against, honestly is a wind forced bow. Um, so if we put this bow in our uh, category here, you'll see that 35 to 238 is nowhere close to 35 to 547. Um, the attack speed on this bow is going to be much faster with 50% versus the 20% on wind force. And um, the 250% enhanced damage is the same on both of these. Uh, what Gold Strike Arch is missing is the bonus 
to the maximum damage, which is what Wind Force has over it. Um, Gold Strike Arch also does not have the knockback effect on it, which is kind of a downside. Um, and it does have Replenished Life plus 12, which I forgot to mention, um, which is actually always nice to have on items. Uh, it's not the most amazing thing in the world, but don't get me wrong, having Replenished Life on an item is certainly useful. Um, so what are we really looking at here when it comes to this particular bow? Well, we're looking at hidden damage. So damage is not showing up on our screen. Um, so if we take a look at, for instance, uh, the damage of wind, for, or wind Force. Wind Force is 335 to 2,823. And then we swap over to the damage of Gold Strike Arch. Gold Strike Arch is 333 to 1,747. So it would seem that Wind Force is very, very, very much so higher damage than the um than the gold strike arch but since the damage to demons and the damage to undead is against both types and most monsters in the game are at least one or the other there's very few monsters in the game that are neither um you know we will still get a rather nice amount of damage da bonus to those monsters now this also does mean that gold strike arch gold strike arch tends to be more so pvm than pvp wind force would probably be better in pvp because the damage that it has is more potent toward players, whereas the damage on Gold Strike Arch is more potent toward monsters. Now, of course, you can also socket this bow, so you could socket it with a 15% uh, a IAS, 40% enhanced damage jewel, or you could throw a shale rune in there to bring it from 50% increased attack speed to 60-70% increased attack speed. Um, you could also theoretically use this on a uh, werewolf druid, believe it or not. Uh, the 50% increased attack speed combined with all the nice little damage bonus effects and the bonus to damage uh, attack rating on this thing would actually probably make it a fairly decent level 46 uh, werewolf druid item if you happen to come across this. Um, if you also, you could also put this on a uh, paladin if you wanted to try and synergize the fist of the heavens, uh, but 5% chance is, uh, is a very low proc chance. I feel like if you were going to do that, you'd probably put a shale rune in it to make it even faster and then run fanaticism, and that would kind of defeat the purpose. Um, all in all, the gold strike arch uh, is definitely a solid option for a boson, uh, specifically a physical damage boson. Um, I feel like it really kind of shines toward the physical damage characters. Um, it's much easier to come by than the Wind Force bow, and, um, and chances are you've probably found a couple of these, although you may not have paid attention to what the stats were. But now that you know what the stats are, and if you do happen to find one in this very nice condition, um, you could maybe give it an upgrade and throw it on your, uh, your boson. Um, if you're looking to find this particular bow, I don't think you're going to have much trouble. Um, I believe I found like six or seven of them so far since uh, Diablo 2 Resurrected launched. And um, and quite honestly, it, I, 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 I don't foresee most people having issues finding this item. Um, it just it seems to drop a lot. Um, but finding a good version of this item is a different story. So let's uh, take a look real quick and see where the highest drop chance is for this particular item over on Silos Pen. So here I have a very simple setup. Um, I'm set up between the 150 magic find here and I'm running um, bosses. Um, and we have a very high probability um, with Bale in Nightmare Difficulty. That looks like your best bet. Uh, Nightmare Difficulty Bale is 1 in 736 with a non-quest drop. Uh, we also have Andariel in Hell with the same probability pretty much uh, in both quest and non-quest. Uh, 1 in 784. And... Um, Looks like Diablo and Nightmare is not bad either. Uh, we, we ignore Duriel's existence because Duriel is a troll and drops six to scrolls of town portal. Uh, Nightmare Mephisto is not bad, so if you farm Nightmare Mephisto. Uh, but it really looks like Nightmare Bale and Nightmare Diablo uh, seem to be your best bets for low-level finds on this. Uh, let's take a look at Super Uniques as well. Uh, looks like we've got Hell Cow King, uh, Nightmare, Neolithac, Hell and Neolithac, Hell Summoner, Hell Radiment, uh, Countess in Hell, Cow King and Nightmare. So the Cow King and Nightmare can drop this, which might be a good place to farm. Uh, Pindle Skin in Nightmare can drop this, uh, as well as Thresh Socket. It's not that hard to get to. Um, I'm looking for easy to find monsters. Uh, Doc Farron is fairly easy to get to in Nightmare. He's super easy to kill. Uh, Bone Ash is super easy to kill in Hell Difficulty, so that might be a good choice. And um, 
all in all, um, it's a pretty common item, and uh, you might be able to even trade for it if you're really looking for one. Uh, but keep an eye out for a perfect version of Gold Strike Arch because it does have some interesting uses and can be paired with um, things like laying of hands or, um, you know, grave palms, uh, ghoul hides, things like that to increase the uh, enhancement to those particular, you know, undead and demon monsters. As always, I do appreciate you guys and gals watching my videos, um, even when the f lightning is coming from the heavens. And as always, keep watching.